The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and are not those of PESMO Radio, its employees or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements of any radio show programs or products mentioned on air, on our website, social media accounts and marketing materials. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to PESMO Radio, its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing PESMO Radio. Are you a songwriter? Are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorrento. Thank you for tuning in, and welcome back to The Songwriter Show. I'm your host, Sorrentos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words are very important to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every Tuesday evening. I believe that every song is a story. The Songwriter Show is broadcast live on number one ranked PESMO Radio and has listeners in all 26 countries in the world and every state in America. The station is also licensed with ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and SoundExchange, and has partnerships throughout the music industry, including iHeartRadio, and exposure to over 300 million listeners. Tonight's guest is Eternal Frequency. Eternal Frequency is a five-piece female-fronted hard rock band hailing from central Pennsylvania who use anthematic rock and roll as their muse to formulate a fresh, modern, hard rock sound of their own. Accompanying the drive and power of their songs, they also bring a strong, energetic stage presence with them when they perform live. They have managed to land four nominations for the 2019 annual Central Pennsylvania Music Awards, including Best New Artist, Album of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best Female Vocalist. They took the award home for Best New Artist Band. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. How are you doing? Good. So I think we have uh, Justin and Mel. Yes, sir. Awesome. So you guys are representing the band, huh? So they're leaving it all in your hands. We'll do our best. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hopefully we'll have a good show. I'm excited. I I heard your song uh, before the show, and man, it's awesome. I think the hard rock genre is a little misunderstood, and I like the spin you guys are putting on it. Do you guys think there's an inherent bias, like when you tell someone you do a little bit of hard rock, or do you think that's an older type of thing? I, I would say that's pretty accurate. We're, we're definitely we're trying to be that unpredictable band as much as possible. And, uh, you know, as our future projects and stuff that we already have in the works is coming is coming towards you. Um, it's it's every song is going to be a little bit different, but I think it's it's safe to call us hard rock. We're, yeah. all, we're all rockers. ML here is an 80s hair metal person. I am uh, a love it. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm an I'm a prog metal guy, and but we don't play either one of those things, but we are very much influenced. Yeah, by it. I think our main goal is to show that rock isn't dead. You know, we live in a very pop influenced world. We're here to show you that pop. I mean, rock rock is very much alive. Yeah, I totally understand and hear you because I love rock. That's the main thing I love too, and I feel like we are so underrepresented on the charts and everywhere, but. I think rock fans are very loyal, and I think everyone's looking for a good rock band to hook onto. So I'm glad to find you guys, and hopefully the audience feels the same way. Well, thank you. I, I, we definitely agree with that. You know, we, we we're trying to make a statement. You know, it's not just we're not just smoke and mirrors. We have things we want to say. You know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And we're just one of the lucky ones. There's so many that are out there, and it's just like you said, we're just we're falling below the radar. We're falling below the mainstream. But, you know, hopefully one of us, hopefully us, um, you know, can kind of like lead the forefront and, you know, get rock back on the charts. Yeah, I think it's it's like a pendulum. You know, I think it's going to head back this way. I think everyone, everything's swung towards rap and hip hop, which I get. I mean, you know, great grooves, but that kind of mixed with pop. But I think rock is the next thing coming on the horizon. I really feel that way. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Fingers- oh. What was that? I just said fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do without these hair though. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your band. When did you guys get together? Um, the band formed back in uh, May of 2018. 
Um, I'm one of the founding members of the band. Um, honestly, I don't really like talking about um, the start of the band so much as I like to do now because I honestly feel that we really have a core group of people now in the band. Like the band finally is like a family and sure. we're just, you know, we're kicking butt and we're writing amazing music and I couldn't be more proud of the team that I have now. That's awesome. It's great to finally find people that you connect with. Exactly. Yeah. That's a tough thing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the music. How do you guys come up with it? Is there, is it a collaboration of all five? Is it one or two people? Um, well, Justin, Justin writes the bulk of the music, so I'll let him talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think, um, I think when it comes to our songwriting, we try to, I, I feel like there's always like one core songwriter in the band and then the, the, the singer, because, you know, the singer is going to be the one to invoke all the emotion and you need someone to just piggyback off of. And sure. so with that being said, it probably is the two of us where we kind of like, we build the foundation, but you know, you can't have a restaurant without a sign and the rest of our band is the sign. Right. And so they will, they'll hear our ideas and then we just continue just piggybacking off of each other. So really the real magic kind of happens when we go into the studio, everybody has a voice and then it becomes a whole nother animal. So yes, it starts here, but by the end of it, we've all put our mark on each and every one of the songs, which yeah, I think is, actually, it's a really cool thing because it, it kind of like breaks the egos. It breaks, it, it'll keep us united. Exactly. Yeah. And you get that, uh, you know, five people have different ideas. So I'm sure each one of you brings a lot to the table to more fit into the end result. Absolutely. We all come from different musical backgrounds. Um, but also at the same time we can meet in the middle and we can, you know, share that particular love for our sound that we're trying to create. And everybody has been on board with that. It seems like everybody's on the same page of what we're trying to do, but all the while using everything that we know as a catalyst as well. Yeah. So we talked a little bit, you know, I'm influenced by eighties very heavily too, but if you guys, there are five different people each bringing something to the table, but if you could pick like one or two bands that you all as a band are influenced by, which would you pick? Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, ah, I, I'd say on my personal end, and also Justin, it would definitely be Queen, because I know a few other members in the band also enjoy Queen as well. You know, yeah. when we sing for, you know, the very anthematic rock like you read in the bio before, um, and just, you know, catchy songs that people want to sing along to. That is definitely an influence for us. Absolutely. That's a great influence. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there, did you guys see the movie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was great. Times. Yeah. Times. <laughs> yeah. I've never cried so much in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the uh, band. Like who does, since some people aren't on the show, could you just let the audience know, like who does guitar, who does bass, drums, you know, what each person with their role is? Um, okay, so I'm ML. I'm the lead singer, and I write all like the lyrics and the melodies. Justin's the lead guitar, and like we said, we he writes pretty much like the bulk of the music. Uh, Tyler Travis is our bass player. AJ Lopez is our other guitar player, and Dane Lowell is our drum, is our drummer. Perfect. Okay. Um, what does your typical week look like as a band? Do you guys rehearse every day, once a week? You know, obviously with Corona, the touring is kind of on a hiatus. So tell us a little bit about what it was like before that and after that. Oh, well, before that, I mean, considering we're still an up and coming band, we, we try to at least get together, you know, one to two times a week and just, you know, shake the dust off. When, the, before this whole pandemic actually happened, we were trying to gig, you know, just a few, a few times a month because, you know, we're, we're still, we're still kind of like branching out there as much as we can we all kind of know what the ultimate goal is and we will get there. But right now, I mean, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty, I'm not going to lie. We're boring. You know? <laughs> yeah, Everybody's we're, boring. My friend right now. So you're not alone. Oh, oh, I mean, if we're talking present time, I mean, she and I, we're in our pajamas right now. So we are very <laughs> boring. Yeah. 
So yeah. we got our first question of the night. Beth is asking, what is the most famous group to come out of Pennsylvania? Anything come to mind? I assume uh, you guys are all from Pennsylvania. Oh, we got a good one. Yeah, there, there's actually quite a few. Um, if we're talking Scran, Pennsylvania, of Breaking Benjamin, which is huge, you have Motionless and White. Red Lion, we got Hailstorm. Yeah, Red Lion, we have Hailstorm, and we also have August Burns Red, which is right here in Lancaster where we're at. Wow, cool. That's very cool. Before COVID, were you guys uh, touring consistently or doing some gigs? You said you were trying to get your name out there. Yeah, we're playing a few gigs here and there. Um, yeah, we're pr pretty much like local stuff for the time being. But, um, you know, as far as touring, uh, we actually were planning on doing that this uh, past season or this past winter. But clearly we got interrupted. Yeah, it's mostly just been about, you know, the writing process. And we're trying to work on hopefully – uh, a full-length album. We'll see. We, we've got a lot of songs in the works right now, so something something cool is going to happen. <laughs> oh, can't wait. What do you guys envision happening with music in the next year once the coronavirus lifts up? Anything you guys kind of see on the horizon? I hope Billie Eilish disappears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't really care where she goes. I just, I, I don't see her green hair ever again. <laughs> oh, man. That is so funny. You don't think she's a fellow rocker, huh? She can call herself whatever she wants. I have my own choice names for her. Yeah. You know what? It's interesting. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had someone on the show. We talked a little bit about Billie Eilish. And I think there's this misinformation in the public where they think, oh, she's making this in her garage or her bedroom. But you know, she had a big label behind her and they built up this story. So there's so much more to that than what people think, you know? Absolutely. Unfortunately, yeah. I think like a lot of the pop artists nowadays, it, it seems like it's, it's not, not to bash them because I'm actually a very big fan of pop. All of us actually are. And you can actually kind of hear it in our music as well to where we have, we have trap beats and metal breakdowns. So, I mean, we're clearly diverse, but the problem that I feel like is going on with like the pop industry, especially like you said, backing with these major labels is they're almost, they're building, it's like an actor. It's, it's totally. a show. It's a brand. Yeah. yeah. It's a Absolutely. child. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. And, and it's tough and really everything is geared towards Spotify and these little mega hits and go viral. And, you know, these five to six, seven minute rock songs that you'd hear in the past nobody's really doing that anymore which is kind of a shame i agree i agree she and i were just talking about doing a 16 minute long song last night <laughs> wow i did the longest one i did was seven half minutes a couple of years ago and i try to have a five six minute one like once a year and i always get shit for it people are always like where's the radio version and you're like you know it's especially with the guitar and the Sometimes you just want a longer song, you know? Yeah, sometimes you just want, like, a super shreddy solo that people can just jam out to. Like, it's yeah. I love long songs. Like, the stage by Avenged Sevenfold, I think, is brilliant. And it's, like, eight minutes long. Yeah. yeah. That's what I hear all the time from, they're like, well, you know, have a, just radio version. But when you play it live, you can have a longer version. It's like, okay, Definitely. but, you know, sometimes it's okay to have a longer version as the main version of your song, too, I think. Absolutely. You got lots of goodies in there. You want to showcase them. Yeah. How do you guys figure out if a song you wrote is going to make it to your final album? Is there a process? Do you have a brain trust? People you rely on run things by? Well, obviously everyone in the band has to has to like it. Everyone has to agree on it. Um, once everyone puts in their two cents about it, basically, that's when we kind of determine. It's, it's basically the song that, you know... If we just start moving to it, just, you know, it's a no brainer. Yeah. My, my personal method is if ML's not um, retaining any kind of melody, if she's not humming anything to anything that I write, I'm going to ditch it. I'm, I'm totally going to ditch it because in, in the end, I mean, we are a rock band and let, let's be real here. I mean, people want to sing along, you know? Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. So, so, I mean, if she if she's not singing to, you know, certain ideas, if she's not vibing with it, it's probably not going to make the cut because that means that she's not feeling any kind of emotion from it and she needs that. Yeah, everyone needs to, you know, 
want to be able to sing along to something if they couldn't see themselves singing it in an audience themselves and it's not going to work yeah. yeah that's true so you bring up a good point from listening to you guys it seems like you kind of do the music first and then do lyrics and melody do you ever do it the other way um actually um but we, we said that we weren't going to disclose too much, but actually the new song that we are currently working on in the studio right now um, at Atrium Audio is, uh, it all came from ML, actually. It was, she's been singing this chorus just over and over, and she, she'll just, she walks around like a crazy person singing this <laughs> acapella song. It's true. But, but it's, <laughs> but it's it's intoxicating. So like all of us in the band, we've just, we find ourselves humming it. I find myself humming it at work. And so it was like, man, we need to build a song around this because it is just so catchy. And so that, that actually was one of the first times to where, you know, ML heard something and it was up to us to kind of recreate something around her in order to really make it pop. And Honestly, we've just listened to some of the rough mixes, and it might arguably be one of the best songs we've ever written. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. So, Mel, you know, the crazy, uh, I think he called you crazy rock chick, or I don't know what he said. <laughs> Did you take offense to that? Are you going to, like, beat him up later, or is he, are you okay with that stigma? I know I'm crazy, but you know what? Embrace that shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't, can I curse on this? I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Shit is okay. Yeah, it's okay. not. Uh, it's not a real curse word here, so we're good. Okay, cool. I like you. <laughs> um, so tell us if someone was just getting into a band and they wanted to be a rock band, any advice you'd give them? Somebody just starting in this in this field. Buy good gear. Yeah, buy good gear. Um, people are gonna tell you no all the time. People are gonna. <clears throat> you know, judge you for everything, but just, you know, go with your gut and go with your heart. Yeah. I, I feel like in today's time with all the new toys that have been coming out, um, we live in a digital age. We live in a lot of preamp, amp modeling, all these different kinds of things. I would honestly say, and I know that's kind of like straying away and it's more of a materialistic thing, but it, it get good gear. You know, I mean, show up, um, don't, don't come in with a junker guitar um, and just really that, that is like your own personal commitment to it. So if you make that investment, everybody will, people will pay attention more. I, I really feel that. And it shows that you actually care. And it also is telling yourself that you care, you know, just by making a simple investment. I know that's a, like a kind of a weird answer, but no, not at all. Actually, I agree with you. I think, yeah, the biggest mistake I see is, you know, buying a $50 guitar on Amazon is not, you know, I mean, maybe if you're a beginner, but if you really want to make a career out of this, yeah, that's not sending the right signal. And then the other mistake I see a ton is where people keep buying things, especially like software things, but yet they don't know how to use one thing right. So I feel like getting good gear is great, but then if you're going to use, I use Logic, whatever you're going to use, learn how to use it and before you upgrade and add Waves or East West or one of these other platforms yeah. otherwise they have all these plugins and they don't use any of them absolutely you can have you know anyone can have money and buy all the shiny new toys but do you know how to use them that's what's impressive yeah i agree completely so tell us about this song parasite what inspired it we're going to listen to it in about two minutes what do you guys want us to know about it take it away ml uh parasite is basically I was just really pissed. And so it was basically started out as like a journal entry for me where I was just jotting down just emotions from like people that I've dealt with in my past, you know, like ex relationships, people, you know, I've worked with professionally that just kind of screwed me over. So I was just, you know, letting out my feelings and uh, Justin was working on this instrumental, this, this really heavy groovy instrumental. And I was like, we got to turn this into something. Yeah. I was in a new metal I was in a, my Jinko wearing days phase and I was just like, man, we should write a new metal song. And <laughs> sure. That thing was spawned. Okay. And what's the lead instrument in this just for the audience to know? Um, it, it, probably the guitar. It, it, it hit, it slaps pretty hard right at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely pay attention to the drums. The boys feet are fine. And it's some, yeah. All right, let's take a listen, and then we'll come back and talk some more, okay? Awesome. Sounds awesome. Enjoy, guys. 
All right, check this out, guys. Here we go. Well, that was a really cool song. Yeah, I could hear a little bit of guitar uh, on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan of my own tune. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're patting yourself on the back. <laughs> uh, it's all good, man. Um, you know, one of the things that we talk about sometimes on the show are, are the importance of connections. So I imagine you guys' connections individually as well as a band how do you guys go about trying to do that in this environment with COVID? You just started your band. How do you think is the easiest, best way to get connections that are relevant? Um, are you talking about primarily between the band? Or with fans? No, I was talking about the band getting connections with publicists, other artists, you know, basically trying to take it to the next level as a band. Uh, we've been... We've been lucking out with with our connections lately. They just, you know, they've been hearing our stuff and they've been wanting to like we just we just got a manager recently. His name is John Phillips of 900 Management and he heard us and he was just blown away and we started working with him and that was just word of mouth. Um as well as we've been working with uh Tag Publicity on uh who hooked us up with this interview. Yeah, believe it or not, I feel like uh, COVID has been kind of doing the work for us right now to where it's like 
people are stuck at home. People are looking for something new that they're trying to change the monotony. So they're seeking new things out. They're getting hobbies. They're trying to find artists that they've never heard before. And somehow we fell into their radar, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that gets to another question, right? How do you get people to take you seriously as a band? We, Just, we start swearing a lot in our songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's emotion, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, honestly, uh, we we show honesty. Yeah. We, we play what we want to play, and you know, I feel like people have been gravitating a lot towards that. I mean, we're in the midst of a pandemic, and we're also in the midst of an election. We're going to be swamped with a whole bunch of lies soon. So, you know, we're going to be yeah. as often real as possible. And yeah. I think people will like that authenticity. Yeah, we don't cater to anything. We do what we want to do. And I think people respect that. And our peers respect that as well. Yeah, for sure. And at the end of the day, you're going to have people gravitate to you that want to be there. You know, they're not paid. They're not they're not part of a system. They're not part of a marketing budget. They're there because they want to be there. And that's that's all you can ask for. Exactly. Yeah, people have really stuck by our side, even in this where, you know, musicians are pretty much we're homeless right now we're orphans and but our true our true people and people we didn't even know have really been you know sticking by our side and it's it's been awesome it it just goes to show that it's not dead yeah you know? i'm very grateful for that yeah one of the other questions i like to ask everyone on the show pretty much is about scams so we've all fallen for them give us some advice any that you've fallen for that you want to warn us about or that you've heard about just so we can all protect each other Scams. I'm trying to think of any. I don't think we've really fallen into any scams quite yet. We've been pretty lucky with uh, the opportunities. Again, and no, no scams have really arisen just yet. But I mean, once again, we're not really too too worried about it, and yeah. and we'll keep you updated on that. The next time that we come onto your show, it might okay. happen. I mean, obviously, everyone just keep your guard up. And read things thoroughly. You know, you, you got to watch yourself. Don't just, you know, you can't give into the hype of things. You can't get too excited because being in a band, yes, it's fun, but it's also a business too. And you're running a business. You got to protect your business and protect your band family. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. You know, why don't you tell us a little bit about each band member? What is their hidden superpower that you're going to reveal to the world on this show? Uh, well, Tyler is secretly Jonathan Davis, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> okay. I thought it was Jesus, but we, we came, <laughs> yeah. to, come to find out he's actually Jonathan Davis from Quarm, which is pretty good. Um, <laughs> um, okay. ML, honestly, like, th this is actually, like, a legitimate superpower, and I, I get the privilege of hearing it quite frequently. But our our songs do not do her voice justice just yet. But this girl's range is incredible. You can tell that she came from musical theater and it, it's probably hands down the greatest voice I have ever heard. You're too kind. You're too kind. That's to a me. superhero. That's a superhero right there. Awesome. Wow. That's, that's the ultimate compliment, right? Well, Justin, I'm looking for a promotion. Not only is Justin an amazing guitar player and songwriter, but he is a killer photographer he does videography. He does all of our demos. Like he's just, he's becoming such an amazing mixer at home with, you know, his uh, studio one and just everything that he's doing with that. It's just incredible. And, uh, AJ Lopez, he's our guitar player. Um, he, I feel like he's the seventh backstreet boy. He's, <laughs> he's a pretty, pretty man. And, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't really say that's a superpower, but, you know, he definitely, he grips me sometimes and it makes me feel well. <laughs> um, He's going to be the face of your marketing. Is that what you're saying? Maybe, maybe. I mean, we, we do have a female fronted, but we have yeah. a female fronted. But I mean, if it, if it doesn't pan out with her, I mean, we throw him in a tutu. We it's might true. be okay. It's true. We can bring right. the big laptops back. Yeah. And yeah. As, as far as Dane being the drummer, I mean, honestly, his talent speaks for himself. Yeah, Dane's a rock star. I am, he's come such a far away since when he joined the band till now. He is blown us all away, and I couldn't be more proud of him. Yeah, he's the most humble guy out there. It's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, everyone in this band has just 
everyone has such a good heart. Like we're all in this for the right reasons. Nobody's here with an ego. Nobody's here to just, you know, make money off of it. We're here because we love it and we just want to give it our all. Yeah. And we're friends. So, um, I usually ask this in a few more minutes, but I'm going to ask you now because we had a uh, caller basically ask for, uh, I don't remember the bandmates uh, that you said was basically good looking. She wants his phone number. So why don't, why, don't you just, why don't you just give us your website? Where can people buy your music, stream it? I asked that at the end, but I'll ask it now. She can write it down and try to stalk them a little bit, I guess. Okay. Um, our website is www.eternalfrequencyband.com. Um, you can find all of our music, Spotify, iTunes, Apple. Basically, if you go on Google, type in internal frequency band, we'll pop up we're everywhere. Yeah, and as far as AJ's private site, I'm in the work I'm in the process of like back and forth and stuff like that. And you know, I gotta Yeah. I gotta get that eighteen and over. That's right. It'll be like whatever, Tinder slash AJ or whatever. She'll Yeah, it'll be on their site, Jessica. You can check it out there. Um, all right. <laughs> so Justin, uh, are there any apps on your iPhone or Android that you can't live without? Um, your Sweetwater. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> it's it's not an app, but uh, the my, the Sweet Sweetwater uh, shortcut. So, because uh, I'm a I'm a gear nerd. Actually, we're all kind of gear nerds, and so I I can't stop looking at things that I can't afford. You know, all these yeah. guitar all these different toys, even instruments that I don't know what they actually sound like. I want it because they're, I just want it. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, Emily, who's your favorite person to follow on Instagram? Uh, who's my favorite person to follow on Instagram? Um, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> really? Gordon okay. All is right. actually my spirit animal. So it's a cool <laughs> dude. All right. Um, what's the strangest compliment you guys have gotten about your lyrics or music? Someone called ML feisty. And I was just like, yes. Um, I am rather feisty. It's a little Italian girl in me. Yeah. Um, aside from that. Yeah, we haven't really had anything weird. We, we did have a, so, so someone mentioned something about our song called Feel This Way. And um, apparently they said that like every single time that they play it, you know, floodgates open up and they're crying. And, you know, that's, that's always kind of a, a really nice compliment, even though you find yourself saying sorry. Yeah. Sorry for making yeah. you cry. It's cool how music can affect people though, like that. You know, that's Absolutely. how that's how powerful it is. Yeah. ML's been getting a lot of feedback from Parasite from uh, you know, people that have like re- that came from really toxic relationships. Um yeah. and saying, Oh man, you took the words right out of my mouth and stuff like that. Yeah, Thank this you. this girl actually sent me a message and she's like my ex was trying to get me back, so I sent him Parasite. <laughs> and I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cathartic, right? There you go. <laughs> Bam. So you talked about spirit animal. What are each of your spirit animals, if you could pick one? Like I said, uh, Gordon Ram. Wait, like an actual animal? Or yeah. Like, can it- yeah, like a tiger, bear, or elephant, you know, anything like that. Uh, mine's a red panda. Because they're Not, cute and they're red like my hair. <laughs> I'm trying to picture a red panda. All I can think of is a black and white panda. Red panda. It's got like a straight tail. Like, um, yeah, think of a fox with a raccoon tail. Yeah. Okay. I got, I'm going like, to go Google that when we're done because I don't think I've ever seen a red panda. Well, yeah, once you see it, you'll be like, yep, that's ML right there. What about you, Justin? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'd be like monkey. You're not a monkey. I think you're more like a wolf. I'll take wolf. Yeah, sure. I, I I don't know, so I was just given one. I'll I'll take wolf. Wolf or a lion? Holy crap! So I just I just googled red panda on my phone. Man, this uh, interesting looking. I've never seen this. Wow, are that's they huge. They're so some, are, some are cute. Some look sinister. So it's it's cool. It's interesting. We that's, went to the zoo, uh, the Cape May Zoo, which is in uh, New Jersey. <laughs> And I saw one in person for the first time, and I just, like, I died because it was so freaking cute. Yeah. But, but it, it is ML to a T because, you know, she's, she's cute, I, I guess. She's cute. And, <laughs> but she's a, she's a nasty bitch sometimes. Hey. <laughs> I 
I gotta be tough, you know, in this industry. Yeah, every- I gotta- <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, you definitely do. Uh, don't let people walk all over you, especially Justin. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. no I'm, I'm gonna get smacked you as, soon, as soon as we hang out. <laughs> So I'm going to, uh, when I send you guys an email after the show, I'm going to include this picture of this red panda I found because it's pretty cool. <laughs> but, but anyway, not to get distracted here, what's the funniest thing that's happened to you guys in the last year or so? Oh, like personally? Uh, personally as a band, just anything you want to share? I don't know. I, the funniest thing? The funniest thing. You stumped me, man. Yeah, I'm pretty stumped. Oh. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a very... How about the coolest thing? How about the coolest thing? It doesn't have to be funny. I'd probably say, you know, well, the, the reactions we've been getting from Parasite and also uh, having John as our manager. Yeah, it's, it's, it's de- definitely uh, signing over with 900 Management. It's, uh, it feels like a game changer. It feels like we're actually taking the next step. Yeah. And... Uh, 900 management, uh, has tour managed for, um, ice T body count, uh, Snoop Dogg, breaking Benjamin, breaking Benjamin, uh, star set. Yeah. Who else? I forget, but those are like the main ones. So it's definitely, we're definitely in good hands. Yeah. That's exciting. What would you say to people that don't have a manager? Do you think they need one or do you think they should, what, what advice do you have for them? I Personally, I would say, see how well you can do it on your own so you can have a very high ante. So the reason that we only signed with uh, 900 Management is because this guy, I mean, he's, he's one of those guys where it's like maybe we, could, we can get from zero to 60, but he can take a 60 to 100. But yeah. I feel like before you ever sign over to a management company, see where your strengths lie. You need, you need to be able to do this because, I mean, the chances of you getting signed and, you you know, the, you don't hear that too often is getting signed to a label. Oh, we're going to get signed. We're going to get all this money. We're going to have a gold, a golden toilet, you know, on, on cribs. It's not it's not we don't live in that world anymore. Yeah, so that's true. Everybody needs to kind of be their own entrepreneur. And if you don't have the entrepreneurial mindset, I don't even know if I said that right. Entrepreneurial mindset. There it is. <laughs> and um I feel like if you don't have that, the managers themselves probably won't want to work with you as well, because if you're going to sign to a management company, it's not a free ride. Yeah. You know, you have to work. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of money involved, but you know, as long as you have that dedication, that's all that matters. It's long you treat it like a business. Like I said before, Yeah. Yeah. do your home, do your homework, put in the work and then people will start paying attention to you. Yeah. Good advice. All right, guys. Uh, give us your contact information website again before uh, I let you guys go. Um, it's eternalfrequencyband.com. Um, you can email us at eternal. Eter- uh, wow, I can't talk right now. Eternalfrequencyband at yahoo.com. That's our email. Um, I say those are our two main main forms of contact. We also have our Facebook page, Eternal Frequency Band. Yeah, and uh, Fluffy AJ Lo. AJ Lopez, that's under construction. So I can... <laughs> yeah. AJ at fluffy. Yeah. Right. Dot com. Right. Yeah. Yo, AJ is going to be so mad at you. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> All right. You know, it was a real pleasure having you guys on the show. Thank you for being on. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Oh, you're welcome. So to any listeners out there who may be artists, if you want to be on the songwriter show, please just reach out to me. I want to thank all the fans for listening. I hope everyone's unique story gets heard around the world. My name is Sorantos. Please join me every Tuesday night to hear other amazing artists share their fascinating behind-the-scenes stories right here at The Songwriter Show. And tonight, I'm going to leave you with a song I released a few years, years ago called The Silence Doesn't Bother Me. Hope you enjoy it. The silence is all around, even if it's thundering outside. Have a great night, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Love you all. The crowd howling outside My doubts spin in my mind Trying to keep them all inside But now they know They know my deepest fears My thoughts, my pain, my tears And if they scream or if they cheer They'll never get to me Now I'm free I'm standing here Doesn't matter what you want 
Stronger than ever, I will never stand down. No, never, no, never. I will rise up. Much stronger than ever, I will never stand down. No, never, no, never. I will rise up. Much stronger than ever, I will never stand down. No, never, no, never. I will rise up. Much stronger than ever, I will never stand down. No, never, never. The silence doesn't bother me. The silence doesn't bother me. The silence didn't bother me. Never bother me anyway. The silence doesn't bother me. The silence doesn't bother me today. The silence didn't bother me yesterday. The silence never bothered me anyway. to the songwriter show to keep the momentum going head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists songwriters and producers that's www.songwritershow.com thank you for choosing pesmo radio